beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of First lesson is found in Acts 9, beginning with verse 1. It's found on page 1706 in your pew Bibles. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's dis disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground, and a voice said to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you, and you will be told what you must do. 
The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand to Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man whom Tarsus Ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call in your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias, went to the house and entered it. And placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus, and at once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. Herein ends the reading of the first lesson. The second lesson is found in Revelations 5, beginning with verse 11, and it's found on page 1919 in your pew Bible. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they sang, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them singing, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshiped. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Amy. Our gospel reading today comes from the Gospel of John, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. This is the story that comes immediately following uh, the time when the story of when Jesus appears to doubting Thomas. After Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, it happened this way Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Canaan, Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, 
But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. And he called out to them, friends, haven't you caught any fish? And they answered, no. Jesus said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. And when they did, they were unable to haul in the net because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him for he had been taken it off and jumped into the water. And the other disciples followed in the boat, towing the Fish, the, the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. And when they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. And Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. And Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore, and it was full of large fish, fish 153, but even with so many in the net was not torn. And Jesus said to them, Come. And have breakfast. None of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. And when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my lambs. And again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? And he answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and, when you were, when, when you were, and went where you wanted. But when you're old, you'll stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And then Jesus said to Peter, follow me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And please be seated. Psychologists will tell us that there are two things that every, all human beings need in order to live a happy and productive life. And no, I, I know it's, it's not what many of you think. It's, it's, it's not ludifisk. Dorothy. <laughs> it's not Ludafisk and it's, it's not binge watching Game of Thrones, which I know some of you enjoy. What we need is a sense of belonging and a sense of purpose. What we need is a sense of belonging and a sense of purpose. And by belonging, I don't mean fitting in. In fact, fitting in might be the exact opposite of belonging. When you try to fit in, you, you adapt yourself. You, you change yourself to other people's expectations, right? And we all know this. Most of us have been in that situation where we've tried to be someone who we are not just to fit in because of either the expectations of others or, or of the social norms or other things, we are drawn away from being our true selves. However, when, when you truly belong, you, you don't have to change a thing. You, you're accepted the way you are, and being accepted as you are by others gives you, you more confidence, a confident view of yourself and helps you shape your individual identity and helps you understand yourself better. And, and, we, and we move when we understand and we feel like a belong, we belong, we move into a direction that is more true to who we truly are. So one of the things that we human beings need is a sense of belonging. The other thing is the need to sense of purpose, and a sense of purpose gives us a reason to get up in the morning, right? We need to believe that what we do matters, 
that we make a difference in the world, that we have value, and that our, our sense of pur purpose can drive our decisions and, and about the way that we spend our time and about the way that we spend our energy and things that we do and, our, and direct our financial resources. Believing that our life has meaning and value and purpose can motivate us and can help us face challenging circumstances with courage and perseverance because we know that our life, our life's purpose is taking us someplace, that it's making a real difference. We need to feel like we belong, and we need to feel like we have purpose in our life. And in today's gospel reading, Jesus offers us both. The New Testament scholars or experts often point to one of the ways we can tell that the resurrection stories are true is that these stories don't always show that the disciples are, are in the best light. If the disciples of Jesus had made up this story, you'd think that they would have given themselves a more enlightened response to the news that Jesus has risen from the dead, right? Right? Their own part in the story would have been more flattering or, or more heroic. And throughout the Gospels, we, we read about the disciples' inability to understand what Jesus is trying to do. They, they consistently don't get it. Their actions aren't always that flattering. They, they aren't always that enlightened followers that we would like to think that they would be after spending that time with Jesus and His ministry alongside Him. But instead, we read about their disbelief. We read about their doubt and struggles. We read, especially in, in the readings in the last couple of weeks, and their failure on Easter Sunday to accept the women's eyewitness account as anything more than an idle tale. Remember that one? They aren't even successful at their own trade, their own work. Namely, in today's reading, we see them spending an entire night out fishing, and for what? For nothing, for nada, for, for zilch. They get skunked. Failure again. And some of these disciples were expert fishermen. They, they were pros. This was their livelihood. And even so, after a long night of casting their net, they come up empty. But that's where their story begins to change. It's now morning in our reading, and it's early dawn, and they could see that they could see someone standing up on the shore, and, and there's this campfire, and they could tell that someone was cooking something on the, on the, on the fire. And now they, they aren't very far from shore, and the person cooking over the fire calls out to them and said, Hey, you haven't caught anything, have you yet? No, they answer. Well, try throwing your net on the other side of the boat. As we heard in our reading, and suddenly their net was full of fish. In this story... John is the first one to recognize the person on the beach as Jesus. And the boat, as the boat gets close to the shoreline, John yells out to Peter, says, Hey, it's Jesus, it's the Lord. And the first thing Peter does is throw on some clothes and jump in the water. One of the, one of the translations says, Therefore, he was naked. And a side note, am I, 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 I'm not sure. That's a, it's a little bit weird to think uh, that, that Peter's naked in the boat when they're fishing. I'm thinking, what, what is up with that? <laughs> anyway, Peter jumps into the water and he swims to shore to see Jesus and others follow and, and bringing in the boat and with their net full of fish. And Jesus says, bring some of the fish that you've caught. And then they all sit and have some breakfast. Grilled fish and broken bread. And they all get their fill. Now, there are two little details that are interesting to notice that I think that we can learn from this text this morning, from this reading. First of all, Jesus, Jesus doesn't need their fish. 
for breakfast for their meal. He's already cooking while their nets are still empty, but when they they follow His direction and cast their nets on the other side of the boat, they catch more than their net full of fish, and He invites them to add their fish to the food that He has already been preparing. Jesus uses our God-given talents and our God-given gifts as imperfect as they are, as imperfect as we are, and adds them to the work that God is already doing in our lives. Jesus invites us to share in a feast that He has prepared using whatever gifts that we bring to the table. Second detail that's interesting to note is that when the fishermen come up empty using their own methods, using their own way of fishing, Jesus gives them a simple command to throw, to change the way they're doing things. And they're suddenly blessed with this abundance. Their nets are overflowing. The net was empty all night long as they used their tried and true and the way things have always been done, fishing techniques, and when they they followed Jesus' direction to do things a little differently, the net was full of fish and their capacity to catch fish grew with following Jesus' encouragement to try something new. And I wonder if there might be something there as well that we might learn something from that moving away from the way we've always done it to try something new, to a new way of doing something, to the new, a new way of being in the church, to a new way of doing life together that can lead to an abundance and a new and vibrant purpose. Back to the story. The story continues. And after breakfast, and Jesus and Peter go for a walk on the beach. And they have this conversation where three times Jesus asks, Simon, do you love me? And three times Peter answers, yes, Lord, I, you know that I love you. And each time Jesus responds with a command for Peter to care for his sheep. Jesus says, feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. Take care of my people, Jesus says. And if we pay attention, there's a connection between Peter's three denials in the broader story. Remember that before Easter, before Jesus' crucifixion? Remember when Jesus, Peter denies Jesus before his crucifixion? Peter denies knowing who Jesus is three times and the cock crows. Remember that? And we can see in the story the connection between Peter's three denials and, his, and these three vows, these three statements of commitment, of love and do- loyalty and devotion to Jesus that Peter gives him. Jesus is drawing Peter into a new relationship through this con- conversation on the beach. He's making things right with Peter. He restores Peter to a right relationship with him. Jesus has a place, for Peter has a place to belong. Jesus is giving him a new start. He's forgiving him for what he did when he denied knowing him three times. And now Jesus is saying, we're good. I still love you. You belong. And you have a purpose in this life. And Jesus restores us as well. No matter what we've been through, no matter what we've done, Jesus still has a purpose for our lives. Jesus restores us to a place where we are, where we are fed from, freed from all that holds us back from being who God created us to be. At the end of today's story, Jesus continues to instruct Peter, essentially saying, this way of following me will be hard. This way of following me, it will be a difficult path. It won't be easy. 
It might make you uncomfortable. Some people won't like you for it. They may tie you up and carry you away. Following me in this way won't be popular, but I promise you it will bring you a sense of belonging and purpose in your life that is beyond anything else you could imagine. Peter, Jesus says, feed my sheep. And so today, people of God, for us here today, Jesus calls to us now. Jesus calls to us now saying, follow me. Follow me. Jesus says, follow me. When he calls us to change the way from the way we've always done things so that he can bless us with abundance, Jesus says, follow me. Jesus says, follow me, as he prepares a feast for us that puts, to us to get, puts together what he provides and what he brings to the table along with what we offer ourselves, the gifts that we bring. Jesus says, follow me. Jesus says, follow me into a close closer relationship into a deeper love that no matter what mistakes or failures you've got going on in your life, all of it can be forgiven. All of it is forgiven and all can be made whole. You are restored. You are made new. Jesus says, follow me. Jesus says, follow me into a relationship where we are restored to be who we truly are as a beloved child of God. We are no longer defined by our past mistakes and failures or even by the expectations that other, put, other people put on us when, and where we then can be freed of all of that in order to love and serve God's sheep, our friends, and our enemies. Jesus says, follow me into a way of life that may not always be popular, but it will lead to a life of belonging, of purpose, where you and the world will come to know Jesus' way of love and mercy for all people. So my friends, today, the question comes at us, and it does, it does every day. Jesus calls us. And the question for us is, will we follow? Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace and serve the risen Lord. Thanks be to God.